tournament and to take that higher seed. Betway odds favoring Godsent for the time being. Map advantage certainly gives them an edge, but here we go. First pistol, get you hot. This means a lot for a Fnatic, of course, <laughs> depending on the results of this match and map. Mr. Mir, he's got, whoa, lots of fear. So many players crossing. What? Ooh. Three threats down outside, one from the top of mini, two crossing outside. I mean, he had no one to help him trade. He had to do that all on his own. And yeah. he's a responsible adult. He's going to make sure he takes care of everything. I really enjoy how the first terrorist just kind of delivered himself into the crosshair. Jumped mm -hmm. off the building. Didn't quite see the landing. Stiko, he turns his head back. And this is tantalizing for the moment. Stiko, who has been one of the most impactful players for Godsent consistently over their rise to this position, and Madden, who just had an incredible first map here in the clutch. But Ida's Balance has other ideas. One tap dirt nap versus Stiko, clearing Madden's low HP up close, and Team Spirit in the retake find themselves first pistol. As far as I'm concerned, it's an enormous win to have gotten the bomb down when they were 2v5 to get that second kill especially from Madden within the site. And yeah, as you pointed out, Mirror's like, ah, oh, perfect. A gift from the Thank heavens. Farlig, Denmark's gift. One Definitely gifted. Denmark's many gifts. <laughs> yeah. Counter-Strike, Denmark's gift at times. But, uh, and listen. him, Denmark's Grinch. Yeah. <laughs> Ah, I'm going to miss making fun of him for, for the next little while, but yeah. uh, you know what? Ooh. Playoffs are just around the corner. Mir also around the corner that he had to fall back around because he tried to go out with that tempered aggression, tries to chuck the frag grenade deep inside of the smoke, and, well, his clearing of the mini gives the CTs their second frag. Now, don't be fooled. This was a straight-up buy-in from Godsend. With the bomb plant, they got themselves a nice trio of rifles, all of which still standing. Zen, though, going to be caught out by SDY. It is traded, but Stiko's the only player for Godsent who actually has much health. Poor Farlig, 6 HP. Going to go ahead and give away the AK, but the noob tube, kafunk, kafunk. <laughs> Magix gets it done. Team Spirit, 2 -oh. oh, that third kill would have meant the world. As we can see, the money is, starts to get a little bit better here for, for Team Spirit. On top of the fact that two of these kills are with a shotgun, of course, and an upgrade into the AK, Godsend will try to keep them honest by upgrading slightly. They've got three deagles, two glocks, no utility other than that whatsoever. Probably could have afforded to get at least one flashbang, if anything. But they'll now try to cross fast outside. Mir has been so good on this box. He's played in the same spot, basically watching three different lines of sight. Flash from his teammate to help him out. Okay. I didn't even Hello. see Madden on his screen. Well, he definitely did not either. That kind of puts a bit in question, but Godsent have other ideas as opposed to trying to follow up on it, probably knowing that crossing in no man's land would be the end of their days. But, oh, the noob tube back in on Magix. He's taking a lot of damage. It wouldn't be the worst weapon to offer over, but a 5v3 advantage seems a bit too much to give. He's going to play close to his smoke. They're just all holding inside of lobby. Yeah, I don't know how they want to approach this. There's a couple of ways I feel like Godsend can win right now. Going back outside, maybe one of them. 50 seconds still left up. They've got the lurk inside of Squeaky. They know that Mir is dead outside. Um, maybe they just try to slow clear, clear heaven and and, uh, and hell and hope their deagles clasp their hands and hope their deagles connect. Well, it's just this one M4 they have to get by. And even if three of them can manage past that, won't be too bad. Yeah, Sunday Young's gonna try to move the MP9 in front of the hit. He does so, dropping the bomb carrier. Nice little adjustment there for the head of Madden and even gets the three piece. The late lurk from Crystal down ramp could have been huge had they found a bomb plant, had they disturbed the counter terrorists enough for them to have something to work with. But this one's finished. Eight seconds left over. Crystal, he's kind of hoping to die because they know oh exactly God, where yeah. he is. They're Money's just gonna, gonna get hurt. Live. Oh. Yeah, they let him live before. Done. Yeah, no money. That's really money. awkward. No bomb, so no way to threaten that you're definitely going to plant and didn't know where the last guy was. That is uh, pretty rough for Crystal, considering they were going to buy. 
They just clearly click to him a little bit later. Ouch. This is a nice opening, yeah. And they almost do enough damage to Magisk. Where, ma magisk. Magix. Magix. Tricks are for kids. Magix. Um, that they could have just pushed upstairs, but they're so scared of that shotgun. Understandably. You know, an SDY's MP9 wasn't further from it either, so there was a very real threat in the lobby crunch, but gun round coming out of I Disbalance. Good for the first off frag, and we do still have Mir tucked behind here, so the other two counter terrorists could play it safer if they choose to. Over the top of Silo, Farlig comes into play. Mir and some die young are gonna activate, and Zen trades one back, but he's low HP, so Mir you can't help but feel like he wants this one. A single well-placed AK shot could shut him down. Oh, oh my oh. goodness. He's getting pressure. He knows he's happen? pinched. Yeah, okay. he's got to make the move. Skiko tries to claw this one back as the last man standing here for Godsend, but he doesn't have the bomb in this 1v3. Yeah, and Zen, does he do, Does he want to be the one to try to fight there? Mir, it looked like they, they saw each other at least a couple of times in those engagements, yet he still wanted to fight with such low health. You know, part of this round is because Crystal messes up a bit and doesn't die before time's over. As the last man up last round, so he only had a P250 on this one. But part of it is because Team Spirit's CT setup was so multifaceted with the different angles outside that they were holding down. Every time a kill came out, a trade was in sight. Early softening damage off of the nades. Little desperate cross. Ooh, it's going to cost them more HP, but they still get over. Mir's going to have to go down. Try to Heard plug that. the hole before the sink of the ship, but oh, he gets back as well. Yeah, way too much to handle on his own there. Very calculated, not wanting to offer away the gun. Good smoke usage as well here. That should cover the bomb plant with Farlig and gives Madden a chance to even drop the opera. Now, remember, they gave away the vent control, so Stiko takes that much for free. Excellent bank grenade. Some die young, dealing with the closest threat. That's going to give him a little breathing room, but Zen in from behind. He knows there's another player there, but the flanker becomes the flanked. And it's still on for the retake, but the bomb halfway gone. And the T's, well, still just fighting off of the pistols. Farlig, he's tucked behind control. He could creep through this smoke. Yeah, that window is open. All he has to do is oh, kill the defuser. Whoa. He actually picks up the headshot, which is incredible. But it is covered. It is killed. It is diffused. It is done. 5-0 start for Team Spirit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, 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 the T side looking a little bit lackluster here for Godsend just because of the amount of outside presence that's just not working out Ooh. with them trying it over and over again. The shots are still being hit, though. And if, if not for that big late lurk into the lobby, into Ram, then maybe the Zen stays alive. They actually win on time in that situation. But uh, it, it works out for Team Spirit. I like their CT adjustments outside. The things they're doing are very sensible. And again, there's always trades here. Great nades. Great utility usage. Mir finds another opening on Crystal. And they immediately recede off this setup. We saw the trades kind of go in favor of Godsent towards the end of the outside take. So this time they don't overstay their welcome. I'm still a little perplexed with Farlig's last Tech 9 kill. It was crazy. It was like last That frame. was nuts. Mm -hmm. That was like that, uh, that Reddit clip you had mentioned the other day. Where he dies in the molly. Yeah. Kills at the same time. Mm hmm Riveting. But not done. I disbalance, still eyes up, peeks into the opera, will not be punished for it. Mir understands that he is essentially a landmine right now. Zen's the gonna... Terrorists, yeah. Oh, Farlig's giving up his back. If Mir swings oh, he wide here, know. Farlig's done for. Yeah, 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 but Stiko is on can top. Can you lure him? There's still Stiko, yeah. Oh. Oh, his teammate helped him. Oh, Stiko headshotted. Oh, my God. Stiko headshotted Farlig. Well, a little friendly fire, you know. Sometimes you got to do what you got to do. <laughs> Break a few eggs, as they say. Yeah, yeah. Eggs, in this case, Farlig's brain. <laughs> Poor guy. Just get right eggs. You word. Chopper. Well, he finds the timing. Everybody was just kind of creeping and crawling in that moment. Mm -hmm. CT's feeling a little uncomfortable, not wanting the terrorists to group up and make their play. And and luckily for him, that kill just now was right before Stiko actually rounded the next corner. So untradeable, but still sustainable. Stiko, he's going to get down onto this B bomb site, planting inside of his smoke. But he Plant. has to stick it now. <laughs> and he's going to get that money. 
Oh, he's even still standing after the fact. Eight health to try and clutch this with, and a Molotov on the door. That's going to fumble them forward. The frag would have gotten it had the 5-7 not worked out. I disbalance. Kills the last man. Six rounds in a row here for Spirit. Everything's looking good on this CT side, but there's openings for Godsend. Don't forget that. It was it was actually imperative that he gets the bomb down because he not not for the sake of winning the round, but he would have died after died after time or died and got no money uh, mm -hmm. with the, with the clock going down. So that was a uh, kind of very important for Sticko there, just to stay afloat. Don't want the economy working against you. Original gangster Chopper's former team includes Fluffy Gangsters, Dope, and Team Swag Yolo. Okay, maybe Chopper is a reference to Weapon. Chopper, Chopper down. Yeah. Cool. I like it. I grew up on rap influence as well. Crystal zero and six, part because of, partly because of the, the economic mistake of dying and having the PT50 on the following rounds. It seems to be haunting him. He's long grenades on this round. Team Spirit looks super good. Okay, we've all got, got to go map to map this tournament with how good and bad teams are playing. Great start here for Team Spirit, of course. But I think it's more of a highlight on Godsend's lack of a game plan. A lot of their outside takes, relying on these Lurk kills. Team Spirit seem way more comfortable with the idea of the Lurks than they did in Train. Punishing the squeaky door first. A little double peek over towards I Disbalance. He doesn't like that one. He's going to fall back. Gives up ramp room. And Godsend have maintained a little map control here. CTs contain it by throwing a Molly over on Hell. And look what Crystal's got off to. He just crosses the open gap, and nobody sees him. Double-edged sword going for these lurks. You're relying on timings to work out in your favor. So far, hasn't been so good for Godsend. But yeah, they've made a lot of progress so far. And yet, watching your back at ramp is never a good sign. Godsend having excavated this part of the map means they potentially could crush Ida's balance. I think Crystal, if he pushes up against that window... Yeah, he could have line of sight. Yeah. Oh, oh nice shot, though. Nope. And another eye disbalance, man. We got some awesome op shots from him on train. He's not going to be able to maintain for the three piece, yet still a great job done on this B bomb site. I feel like they recognized that the open cross could not come back to bite them. Crystal had to break the window in order to get line of sight. And we saw what happened, but Farlig. Looking to use his op to lock this down. He gets the second. Now flicking oh. back over. Incredible play from Farlig. Incredible hold on the bomb site. A two versus four to bust Godsent onto the scoreboard. When isn't it, man? This guy has no hesitation whatsoever. See how wide he swings out? And off the railing into a spot where Chopper's confused as to where he could have gone. Thinking he maybe pushed into the control window or something, not knowing. And dies to the great flick by Farlig. A bit closer now, back in 2013, Crystal's al alternate attacks played against 16-year-old Chopper in his fourth ever game and smashed them 16-4. So super cool. It's one of those storylines of like Plopsky joining NIP or, you know, the player that was like, I mean, in this case, he wasn't a fan, but jumping or like Cold Sarah meeting Fallen, you know, like being able to play with them after having competed against them when you were not nearly at their level is such an interesting thing that we get in Counter-Strike. Not many other esports have got that because we've got such a rich history at this point. A little bit of Venter. It's not a Longevity awesome buy. Yes, man. Look at Spirit. They've got one smoke on everybody, no other money. I just balance can buy a full nade kit, but that's it. Yeah, no kits, not a single helmet either. Looking at the guns, Farlig and Crystal. Wouldn't matter just yet, but depends on if there's SMGs in the mix. Very cool, though, I have to say, from that last round, seeing Farlig one up, I disbalanced. Looked like he was going to get the big off play of the round from behind the bomb site. But done better by the young, promising Dane. Hmm. Okay, Godsent. They take the pause after they break onto the board. And then we smooth out any issues. We come into this. Headshots all over for Godsend, AKs, and the op. So the lack of helmets will not come back to bite Team Spirit. But the utility could, as you had mentioned, four smoke grenades and already one thrown.
Ooh, Chopper. Playing around the smoke on ramp. Eye disbalanced, fumbling his guns, but good job by SDY there to give cover. They almost lost their offer first and foremost. Now you can hear the T's making noise. In fact, they're able to drop down the vent. Farlick, he's gone. Zen's got bomb, and he still seems to be in back in lobby, so what can Farlick make of this? He is with oh, Crystal side by side. Yeah. Yeah, I was wondering if he had to watch outside, but they have Crystal outside as well. It's a really great round from Godsend so far. Down a man, but like they've got so many advantages now. The ramp play is the big question. Doubling up to shut down this choke point might be huge. Is this all to actually go back upper? They they do have technically the vents to be able to commit to it. Whoa. Now that's one hell of a timing. Yeah, smoke banged. Now they're going to start making that noise down on the B-bomb site. They didn't want to try and play down for the ramp. Counter-terrorists, I think, do a really good job of, like, tempered uh, forfeiture. You know, they give up just enough, but because of these squeaky doors and the glass panels down towards control, they know when it is the full commitment onto the bomb site. Everybody very comfortable just holding off, waiting for the terrorists, forcing their hand back towards vent. A five versus three retake. This should be picked up by Spirit every day of the week. Yeah, the time. We did just watch the 2v4 in the round prior, and yes, bomb halfway gone. Two kills already. Suddenly we're equal, and there's no trade frags out of Team Spirit. There's no response. Completely empty-handed on the retake. <laughs> Farlig just blows SDY's mind, and they convert. It looked like the terrorists were going to struggle to get onto the B site, especially with this shot from I Disbalance. But dude, 3v5 post-plant after the 2v4. Do not let them plan. They had no plan when they got that far. They needed to get their kills early, I guess. Yeah, they can't let them plan. God sent uh, two in a row, and it's a save for Team Spirit. So just like that, they're back in the game. I, I don't know what to say because I feel like Team Spirit have like have like these amazing starts. But God sent did well to get outside control, dropping a, one player, and then finding a new way to get downstairs as well with their lobby players. Um, even though I just balance got that first shot. One man utility belt. Mir had done 85. I don't remember what it said. Well, here, I'll give you the, the hard stat. Mir has 283 utility damage. Three of his teammates have zero and SDY 16. The most amount he, of utility damage for the T's, 14. So, my God. And and he's been got, he's got 10 kills and he got all of this damage in outside on yep. some of these early rounds. A huge part of their start. And ever since God sent have given less credence to outside or brought less attention to their outside lurks, they've done a lot better. And I say I say that with the asterisk that it's only been two rounds, of course, um, but they've won them back to back. And it's just these dinky USPs with so much work to do. I'd say that the lack of utility has come back to bite spirit as well. If we're going to talk utility damage, we should also talk effective flashbangs. And right now, total enemies flashed for the side of Team Spirit is six. 14 enemies flashed for Godsend. So mm. I can't help but feel like in those retake scenarios, although to be fair, last round, we did just see the four smokes and no flashbangs going into it. It's like you kind of need that flash to offset the scopes of Godsend right now. Individually, they're just hitting shots. So if you're walking into the crosshairs, it's not going to be a fun time. Obviously, this round not meant to be fun at all for Team Spirit but they're doing a good job of at least staying alive. Great grenade, great lineup. Zen looking for the anti-eco ace, gets three and then some. A little bit more damage to lend a helping hand versus Madden. Mir gets his paws onto the AK-47, but he's gonna be chased down. So three rounds now for Godsent, still half of that of Team Spirit, but it's momentum on the T side. Man, Godsent's economy is already way better than Team Spirit was even when they were winning because of God sensibility to get kills and bring it close most of the time. And I, I, I'm troubled about this one. Like, I feel like Team Spirit definitely doing a lot of good, aiming really well, good adjustments. But God sense, despite all the odds, like, Farley can get three kills with this off and win the round. Uh, here they finally, well, they get one crossing outside. That's an enormous kill by Sticko. No one to trade it, plus they get downstairs. Crystal's going to bait out some utility magics. We know that he's been great with this auto shotgun. Takes a spot of damage there. And look at the chaos that's been created. Mir pushed back into his spot. Does okay so far. 
Whoa, he is getting pinched. They know exactly where he is. His smoke does cut off the Mac 10, but Madden, angry enough to move in, splashes him on the back of Mini. Chopper and Magix, M4 and Noob Tube. Mir was just alienated. Like, he had to find a very tough fight, which is exactly the spot Godset wanted him in because when he is comfortable, he's clearly going to get one, two kills every time. They're... They forced him to fight between mini. I mean, even just a spam through the smoke had him turning his attention, swinging back and forth, just unclear if someone's going to push through. That was the right amount of pressure for Godsent. And all the while, uh, Farleg was smart enough to not con not concern himself with that. Assume his teammates were going to deal with that trade, spot heaven. They caught a rotator trying to save Mir. So Mir inadvertently gets his teammate killed, which is what Godsent were looking for. And man, the amount of chaos created by Godsent that round was fantastic. I think for Godsent, sometimes it looks terrible when they try that, and sometimes it looks fantastic. But so far, in the CT rounds that Spirit won, they've got a lot of kills. And then they won the two in a row, and they were pretty clean. They won a 3v5. They win this round, forcing two CTs to save. Like, things are starting to look really good again for Godsend. Agreed. Slow start, but they are under control of the situation. And they still have Spirit kind of pinned against the wall at the moment. They're in with everything they can afford, but it is not the best look we've seen from them. I just balance his op constantly on point. I would be really confused on the CT side as to like what Godsend are going to do. And I think that's the value that they've created for themselves. Seems to have the rotate seized up a little bit. The positions are now more in the more static and predictable positions, just covering everything a little bit. This really opens up the map for Crystal to pull off sick lurks. Mir. Oh, he's going to try to clear that out. He had an inkling. Just didn't have the shot. Yeah. Crystal pops out, gets the five versus four. From the man advantage. Godsend oh God. haven't really ever stumbled. Madden playing around with his grenades. Magix is going to put the smoke up in his face. It's just the shotgun and the deagle the flank, here the on the front line. What, the flank right from Crystal. Wrapping around over towards hell, but there's 30 seconds left and the CTs move in. Chopper, he hits them in the lobby, dies through the smoke. Remember, Crystal, he is still flanking around the rooftop silently. Oh, the no scope. I just balance. Puts this one on its head. And now all of a sudden we see the pressure sink in. They're going to sprint right into the shotgun. Stiko trying to trade through the door. Keeps this one going, but he dies to the wall bang. SDY gets his revenge. Last round, Stiko spammed him. And this time he turned it back. When you scream flank, I saw this one from Crystal. But I didn't notice. Yeah, the lobby hit from ramp. So both teams going for a flank. And the CTs finding their timing first and foremost. It's the smokes down in Squeaky that they couldn't help but respect. They needed to push out. If they had, like, tried to force Magix out of position and instead not pretended like none of the CTs were aware that they were there, they could have maybe uh, gotten the kills. And obviously, if you're in the lobby, somebody should be watching your flanks. Oh my god, Mir, off the red box. He's heard three people pass, and he's looking to gun down the fourth. Does so well. Damage as well on the players trying to force the crossover they are very quickly onto the b bomb site chopper with just the deagle gets it done drops that bomb and farlig walks into his death Stiko swings the door and is just as quickly cooled off team spirit two rounds back to back and finally they get one with very few costs five survivors in control the entire time and definitely thanks to chopper we've seen how good that spot is above the control door where it forces you to spin around and look up when there's so many other angles to clear. We saw JKS playing that position to perfection more than uh, more than once and obviously allows you to get to stay up top and to get to the back of the bomb site all in the same few seconds. So yeah, Spirit pull out another one. I yeah, can't help but feel like yeah, again, God said they look great and then they kind of flubbed it, makes you question what they're capable of once again. But yeah, they get downstairs that last round, it looks pretty good. Overall, it's a, it's a hard one to call. There is a mixed bag of buy here to go on his deagle, drawing out some spam fire from Mir. Some Dayong once again close. Squeaky to go. 
Ooh, Happy to take that fight. Yeah, crouching right under the spray. And hey, no. oh, you can't take that long on Farling. Also, what the what? hell? The one did he teleport? Zen just walks in, executes magics like he didn't even know it could be a problem. We're going to have to try and piece together this puzzle from the replays. I'm thinking Stiko gets out squeaky door. That kills the player vent. When the player tucked vent dies, then the other A site realizes that he should be tasked with holding everything. But instead, Magix is so hyper-focused on the squeaky door that the mini walkout gets him. Yeah. So far, like, foolery. As far like kills Mira back outside Big Garage. So then... Zen decides to wrap into mini, knowing that magic or that uh, mirror is either the mini player or the big garage player. So that is a very important name tag for Godsend in this match so far. Anything that has to do with outside, as long as mirror's alive, you're in danger. Also, Farlig, what are you doing on top of Red Box winning duels like that? It's more about mirror whipping, right? Like he, he, uh. He had a few seconds to get that kill. You are correct. He is probably a little sour after that one. Mm -hmm. But uh, there's still time. Double digits can be obtained by Team Spirit if they close this one convincingly. They've got the buy to do it here. Time to put up or shut up. I'm gonna try to dodge the frag grenade. I just balance right back in on the scope. He hopes that somebody walks around here, but he's being peppered by Molotovs. It's very awkward for him to try and find any safe footing. Even Chopper kind of feeling the heat here retreats somewhat off of ramp. Doesn't want to stampede all the way down. Stiko right on the other side of this has a good headshot angle to try and find the duel. So Chopper just wants to stay alive. Chopper keeps falling back, but there's even more players now trying to push him and he does just get that first one. Zen busting open the window calls the attention of SDY. Molotov goes by and his spray connects, but not for the death of Madden, who's gonna follow up with the bomb plant. Oh, jumping in between fights, just very difficult for, it feels like Spirit to read when they're gonna commit or not. And Chopper just gets down there, rotates a bit labored. He tries to win his duel on the ramp. He's been pretty good so far, but yeah, now it's a very favorable situation for Godsend with control in the mix. I disbalance wants to hold on to the stop. They're gonna wait and see where Godsend exit. And that's it, round in the bag. All you have to do is kill that ramp guy soon enough and the whole plan in lower is is thrown into question. You know, if you got a player outside, he's gonna be late to control. They throw the molly in control and someday Young misses a spray. That's the second line of defense. Only two kills you need, clearly. Farlick is alive with a lot of HP. Holy smokes, you barely take any damage from in control. I didn't even know that. He took like 10 damage. Yeah, all under control. Indeed. Not afraid of no bombs. Good <sighs> response like there that. from Madden. Yep, yep, yep. That's two rounds. I mean, you don't have to think into Farlig on the red box, and then you could say the same about that duel. He get the headshot, but just didn't follow up with the kill. And because the first one was labored, there was zero chance at even getting a second. Final round of the first half, Godsend. We're in full control. Team Spirit started to slip a few more rounds on the board, but I think a seven round T side would be good enough. Oof, this one goes unnoticed. Chopper recedes out a, of ramp. They've got Idis Balance to hold it down behind him. And we know how this lurk game goes sometimes. Wow, big risk to blow that door open. Interesting. Chopper taking matters into his own hands. It's gonna boil down to timing versus him and Madden. He walks into the vent. Oh, Madden just looked away. Talk about timing. That one's gonna sting, but there's no time to really reflect on it because there's 45 seconds left over here for Godsent to make their play. Magic, he's burning and blind yet still able to come up with one kill at the very least. Mir waiting for his chance to activate back sight. 30 seconds on the clock and he's got a teammate up in heaven. He's gonna come swinging oh. wide. He's supposed to tuck, but will they come back on him? Stiko close, Farling turn, tries to get the op up and oh my, one HP the difference, but Chopper's on the bomb. It's 39 health for the two T's. No what? 
bro. He swoops in, one hand on the ladder, the other grabs the bomb, and Chopper never saw it coming. I feel like the Molotov, the Molotov kind of spooks Chopper in a way that he lets that happen. And now he has to come up the ladder. He's able to get to the top, but Farlig's the A site. Couple that nicely with Farlig getting more kills than he had HP left over. And you have a recipe for a close half. Seven rounds for God sent as they switch over to the defense. A second pistol that could really set the precedent and take control of momentum. But here comes Team Spirit over towards the ramp room early. Stiko's looking for headshots. Instead, he gets gushed and he loses the closest rotate. So this is a huge start for Team Spirit. Crystal's gonna oh, tuck on the box of the A site. He expects exactly this. He's trying to tap at them. He exposes himself, but they still don't seem to know where he's at. Oh my God, Crystal coming in with two kills, keeping this one close. Now Zen, the last CT with 100 HP, tries to find himself into the mix and he wastes no time. Sprints out from Hut and he's got the 1v1, but Magix takes his head and now it is 15 health for what's left of Godsent. There's even a flank, but they oh, shut they that the flank. down. Stiko. Now he just has to turn his attention over towards Magix, who's just swapped over to the USP. He's trying his damnedest. A single bullet to each of these players would be enough, but he's down to the three shots, goes for the reload, jumps oh, the into the cover. This is unreal. There's no kit for Stiko, and Magix just jumping around has win out the pistol, even with the headshot as the icing on top. It's Spirit with a knife. Well done, Magix. Well done. That's Chef's Kiss. Movement around the bomb. And and just winning the with the one v two, I think plus the third kill on the site to hold it down. It was a good attempt though, for considering the ramp play worked out really well for Spirit. They got that initial kill, then Crystal had to pick up the pieces, got the two into heaven from the bomb site. It was an ugly, ugly spot for Godsend for sure. I mean, they they came close to winning, but still, they probably shouldn't have even come close. It's going to be a force up moving into this round. Things continue to be tense. It was a few slight whiffs that really brought Godsend back into that half. There's a couple of rounds. Some die young in the control room, Mir on that last round versus Farley. And those are the two moments where I feel like Spirit could have had a significant lead. So maybe it's justice that they win this pistol. But can they convert? Tag up Zen pretty early. That scout of Farley trying to find a target to take. And he does re-peek into the bodies a lot of bodies, in fact. So yes, the rifles will sing as Madden swings with the Deagle. There's another one for him here if he catches SPY. Oh, but he looks away at the perfect time for Sumdai Young to bag him. So man advantage up for Spirit on top of all the other advantages they had coming into this. Crystal's trying to find a bit of timing. Man, he has been a nuisance whenever they try to find footing on this A site. And now he has a scout. More pistol damage being done as Zen comes in from the back line. Stiko's going to take a bunch of damage here, but it is the 3v2. No bomb plant yet. Magix, he tries to move forward, has to dodge the flashbang and come in with the kills. Crystal's going to peek, and that's the second one for young Magix. Now Stiko tries with the Deeg, but that too covered. So great recovery there from Spirit. It was looking real scary. Magix. Magix has been digging him out of these bad spots over and over again. That was almost a really sick attempt by Sticko because the nade brings him down to 3 HP and he nearly hit the 1 dig as well. That would have been one of the coolest 1v2s that we've seen. The conversion does not work out. It comes close, but again, it's only because of magic, magics ah, and his heroics on the A site. Farleg with the scale one more time. This time looks a lot better than that last round. He had the money to upgrade, it looks what? like. Zen gets blasted, uh, but he does a whole bunch of damage. What what happened? He, he got that headshot. It was another yeah. one of those moments where like the player who died shoots one bullet and almost like a millisecond sooner. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Go for it. Oh, oh, he hit him too. Bro, I don't think I don't think that the CTs have missed a bullet yet this round. Dude, it is not easy to win a game of Counter Strike these days. Let me tell you, these these shots are crazy. Like having oh. to explain this to your team every single time, it's impossible. Yeah, so what happened? Well, I one-tapped him with the AK, and he still did 80 damage somehow. <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, Farley just looking for scout shots all over the place, and again, he hits it. Tag. That's all they need, I, really. I swear they haven't missed one bullet. I know. They've still got three players. How do they do it? 
damn professionals. Mm, lower rotate. It's Sticko. He's got a Deagle, one of the Deagles. So that means Chopper and Mir, their positions in the question. If Sticko hears the control door, does he stay here? Or does he go over top of it? Because seriously, that's such a strong spot to be in. Control window could compromise it. But again, they're so scared because there's 15 seconds up. They're crushing it from both sides right now. The chopper's tabbing could mean the world. All directions. Stiko's gonna try to stop the bomb. Can't get that one, but oh, it comes down to the wire. Now we have Madden trying to sprint down into the fray. Crystal, wow, fade away headshot. Just gonna instantly move forward on this one. They are both low HP. This would be ungodlike. Crystal. Oh my God, man, he's on one. He's looking for these players. They bait open the squeaky peek. He is still looking, still tapping bomb, trying to get some sort of a real commitment, but they are doing such a great job of just playing with him, keeping him flustered and forcing him to save. He's gonna walk away with the AK. Godsent doing such a good job of dealing damage versus Spirit. Nothing, mm -hmm. not a single part of the map for Team Spirit that round came for free. All the economic damage filtered over into the later part of that first half, which allowed him to get to the seven rounds a lot more quickly. They won the two rifle rounds in a row. The Spirit were saving immediately. And then they, you know, slowly clawed their way back in despite the, you know, the pistol round not going their way. And it all comes with shots like these, man. Madden, two digs in a row. Uh, Farley gets his kill. USP headshot, like extra damage done on players that were dead to rights. All of these things have uh, just amalgamated to a situation where Godsense are just so close to winning at all times. Oh, there goes Zen though. Team Spirit gonna open up with a 5v4. Finally, something comes for nearly free, but there's a trade frag back already. Madden through the squeaky door, finds SDY at a distance. 4v4 ensues, huge utility advantage for Spirit still. Really scary to have a player like Farley outside because he's so versatile with this op, like the way he plays. He's so confident. He's always seeking out information. Basically always hits his shot, having a great game right now. And Spirit have eyes outside. Smoke wall up. Harris inch closer. Farley's gonna fall back a little bit. There is a man inside of Mini. It's gotta be Crystal. Gotta be getting nervous that Team Spirit should be near. They're just gonna silently walk over to the secret stairs. So B becomes the target. No one's dropping. When do yet. the rotates go down? Yeah. Great flash. Oh. Mir finds it. Drops down. Good bout of teamwork there. A very isolated kill as well. You can see Farley trying to hope that they walk around the corner, but he's going to find no answer unless they double back on this. And Mir could always flirt with the A bomb site to try and keep B weakened, but Stiko is already committed upon it. He's not playing above on the rafters, but just outside of the double doors. And he 100% hears all of this noise right now. The footsteps, the spam, but oh, damn. A very quick frag here for Magix and a good move from Idis Balance to double back and check out the vent. Farley in for the clutch, one versus three, fires the op and knows to call it off. This right here is a 12th round for Spirit. Yeah, the op is definitely more valuable next round. Farley knows that. Another great entry by Magix. Obviously, if they're going to play light downstairs, then it's all about Sticko having to come through with a hold and a fantastic flash from Spirit to get one more of the rotators before they even commit lower with that mini drop. I thought that they were going to be a lot more weakened because they had lost some Dai Young in Squeaky after the opening kill from I Disbalance and Madden winning that. Well, it's like, okay, well, they can't catch those rotators anymore, but they find a way to get that mini player despite it. AWP will be saved. Yeah. Gets a, gets a kill at the end. I, I mean, this game definitely is still very, very close, even though it's 7 to 12 right now. There's a couple of pistols to Team Spirit's name. Um, the CP side looks dangerous from Godsend at all turns. Spirit just slightly edging it out. Moving closer towards that finish line just to try to score a third map. Still a scary situation for Spirit, even if we go to map three. So they're 100%. going to be on their heels. Madden, gonna try to get the shotgun above the T's that have already committed out from Squeaky. That's one and done. The lineup maybe for another, but that's a big trade frag here from Team Spirit. They obliterate the A-hold. Nobody other than Madden finding any kind of impact. Really sure some damage is dealt, but uh, Team Spirit just so efficient in their shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder spacing. 
that there was never a chance for the CT side. Agreed. It's the two-point press on the hunt and the squeaky at the same time. And if just looking at Madden's perspective, you'd think they were doing pretty well upstairs to get the opening kill. They have him move around to a new spot, look to do more damage. But meanwhile, the pieces are falling around him. And yeah, it's going to be much easier for Spirit to win these rounds. They don't have to fight Farley. Two rounds in a row, he saves his off as a top fragger. And since he's not able to have impact, I mean, that's all Team Spirit really wants. Bomb blows up. All four players survive on the side of Team Spirit. That's going to be their 13th on the board. So this T side really starting to run away. And God sent, well, they need an answer. So time to call their third pause of the map. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good that they're still talking and still in this. There is a very good buy on the horizon for God sent. Is anyone there? Magix was only involved in 12 kills in the first half. Mir was involved in 29. Wow. And you could, wow. you could see it. Yeah, wow. It was palpable with Mir. But Magix in this second half has is the sole reason that they're in such a stark lead. The pistol round by him, two insane trades, killing Sticko lower. He has done everything for a team spirit in the second half. Big moves. Will it be enough to use this momentum to push it over the line? We got an awesome showing from Team Spirit on the back foot of Train, getting that score far closer than what it could have been. Godsent want to do the same. They got to start it now, and Farley looks hungry. Throws himself into the lobby, doesn't find anybody for it. Team Spirit calculated in their initial setup here, not offering any sort of an opening. Mm -hmm. Did Farley shoot an op off before leaving? I don't know. It seemed like they were playing around the fact that he did scope, but now he's outside. Yeah, maybe he did shoot so he could move. So it's one way to make sure they fight you, is to be in multiple places in the round. Ooh. Wow, that's a critical flick. Big one, he clips Chopper and then gets the response. That was Ida's balance trying to peek out with the op to trade, but instead Farley, Getting the two-piece, finding himself on 20 kills here, and almost finding the head over top of Silo. So doing a very good job of swinging that op around, trying to convince the terrorists to go elsewhere. But Mir does not fear you. He crosses right over to Secret, and nobody saw him do this. Without Farley to watch over it, he has free reign. Everyone pretty much just needs to play one-kill spots from Godsent to... Ice out this round, so Team Spirit will have to get creative using utility to the advantage. And yeah, Magix catches them off guard. They're going to try to draw vents, though, as Mir has already made his way down lower. That's three down. Yeah, both make it. Both make it through. Mir's going to find a little timing on Stiko, who's worried more so about the ramp. Big moves being made here by Team Spirit. They get all three players down. They just burst past the squeaky, but let's see if Zen... Side by side with Madden can do anything about this. Madden's gonna die, the trade frags there. Magix versus Zen, and Zen swings, Ooh. losing his head and giving Team Spirit their 14th. They double up the round count of Godsent. They've got money in their back pockets for the rebuy. Good job there by the T's to slow it all down. Because remember, this was a 5v3 after Farley's double op outdoors. Even when he has impact, they lose at this point because Magix is doing everything. He gets the kill out of Squeaky downstairs, wins a 1v1 clutch. He has been a monster on this T side, an absolute monster. And a fantastic 3v5 from the whole squad, you know? Finding out, figuring out that Squeaky was a spot to go, stopping Crystal from standing in front of that hook, spamming them as they try to cross. In fact, getting that frag as well. Did exactly what they needed to do. And even using Farley and the fact that they knew he had to rotate around because of the silo presence to have Mir sneak in the lower. That nets him the stick sticko frag as well. Mir looking to swoop around the corner. Does get past the mini. Stiko's on the flank. Ah, oh, but some die young. He's in their spawn. <laughs> That's not so sad about it. There should be a rule. Where, like, you know, after the minute mark, you're not allowed to be back there anymore. No more buying guns. Now, Mir also, seeing seeing as the T's just caught one by spawn, he checks the CT side of the spawn and doesn't find anybody. But then as he drops down into hell, catches a kill. Farley, last man left. One versus five. I wish you the best of luck, young Bane. And, well, at least he's got Chopper dead to rights. 
He's even moving forward on this one, but there's a player trying to keep his feet covered through the top of the hut door so he knows it's no more. He's got to go ahead and save. This is Team Spirit finding their 15th round, a stellar T side showing that shows no signs of slowing. Yeah, it's been a high intellect gaming here from Godsend also. And Farley has been doing a great job of saving the off in the rounds they lose. He, he, he somehow manages to like always have impact and also save if they if he can't have impact. And that's credit to Spirit and himself, you know, him for playing smart in his role, but Spirit for doing a good job of avoiding him, uh, even though he's tried so hard to force their hand, you know, baiting out that one three, 3v5 situation. And Spirit, they've got a lot of strats that work right now. It's scary for Godsent. Really feels like, you know, this is probably it. They, since Farley cannot afford the off as well, they are at a whole new low in terms of weakness. They'll go for the nade kits with the MP9s and try to win a complete force up, a, cle a complete and utter basic, basic spin by. It's been a complete and total sweep as well. Don't forget that. <laughs> Team Spirit switching to the T side and have not given up a round yet. Oh, true. Yeah. This is looking like an eight in a row if they close in the 23rd. So who could have guessed it? I mean, Godsend, they, they were off to a slow start as well in the first half, and, and it seemed like, okay, maybe the pistol round would enable that to happen again in the second half, but it's, it's far beyond just the pistol and conversions at this point. It's a, a very clear vision for the T side. Godsend have thrown wrenches in the works. They've definitely found some chances within rounds, but have not broken the curse just yet. Farley over towards the ramp's gonna be tested. He only has that scout to work with and he's initially blinded. So they're already able to work out. They molly him off and he doesn't want to try and force this issue. Instead, going upstairs to try and watch Outer. But in the meantime, Team Spirit gonna trudge down towards the B bomb site. And we have to ask ourselves, what will Madden be able to do? Because with that MP9 and so many bodies moving through him, it's again just a clearing of the defense. Chopper ready to respond. They are ahead of all rotates. This has been a masterclass from Team Spirit on the T side of Nuke. And unless Zen goes for the 1v5 ace clutch, Map 2 goes to Spirit.